United States bombers take off from bases in the Arctic to blast the remaining Japanese on Kiska Island in the Aleutians. Over the enemy base, tons of huge projectiles drift lazily to Earth, guided to their mark by the famous American bomb site. When the big eggs land, they explode like clouds, and one more Jap base is wiped out. Somewhere in China, another American Air Force under General Cheneau maps a raid on Japanese-held Hong Kong. Fighter planes escort the bombers as the squadron flies high over Asia. and thereafter the Kowloon Naval Base. The Chinese cameraman who made these pictures knows it well. Hong Kong is his native city. Now he returns to help rid it of the Japs. in China, safe and sound, American pilots get a warm welcome. They've blasted the Japs from Hong Kong to Kiska. Aboard this old Danish sailing ship, young United States Coast Guardsmen get their first lessons in seamanship and navigation how to hoist the sails of a square rigger as she races before the wind. Wooden ships helping train iron men to handle vessels of steel. In America, Patriotic citizens are giving their blood to save the lives of their soldiers and sailors. One half million pints have been donated, and the Red Cross Blood Bank is accepting voluntary contributions at the rate of two million a year. This young gunner's mate, whose own life was saved by eight transfusions, insisted on repaying the bank for a part of the lifeblood he borrowed. Here is real patriotism his life and his blood for his country. Women workers of Canada hold down the jobs of their men who have been called to war. Here in the world's largest munitions plant, 18,000 French Canadian women are breaking all records in the manufacture of ammunition. Every day, they turn out bullets by the millions. Bullets for rifles, automatics, and machine guns. The factory operates its own kitchens, employs experienced housewives to help prepare nourishing home-cooked food. 
In the lunchroom, 1,500 girls are fed in 15 minutes. Back to work, where artillery shells up to 18-pounders are checked before shipment. And every day they test the quality of their work with point-blank fire on the proving grounds. Brazil shipyards working at top speed. New tonnage being rushed to completion. Today, this great South American nation arrays not only its arms, food, and ammunition against the Axis, but takes its place as a formidable sea power in the navies of the United Nations. Every warship refitted, rearmed, to meet the test of modern war. Speedboats leaving on patrol. Depth charges lashed to the stern. Death to U-boats. Mines to protect the harbors and mine layers to guard strategic coastal waters. Anti-submarine nets are out, floating dynamite to snare any raiding enemy submarine. Brazil, with 3,600 miles of open coast, is on guard. Light bombers of the RAF prepare for a daylight raid on Nazi-held territory in Europe. A picture of their objective, made by reconnaissance planes before the flight. Taking off for one of the most daring attacks of the war, they roar over the channel. Now skimming the treetops, they speed across the countryside. Their objective, the enormous Philips Radio Works at Eindhoven in the Netherlands, a factory which supplied much of the radio equipment used by the Nazi army. pilot sights the target dead ahead, the largest radio plant in Europe. Remarkable pictures of the RAF bombing the Nazis in broad daylight. after one of the most successful raids of the war. Some were hit by anti-aircraft fire, and one barely made the field. But here's the official picture after the raid. A huge Nazi war plant wiped off the map in less than four minutes.